case looks pretty old. But that doesn't say anything about the quality of the violin. The best violins are often in the oldest cases. Matt says the violinist put something in his violin case on the platform. Seems suspicious somehow. The question is, how credible is a statement from an imaginative boy? Excuse me, sir. About the purse. Ah, yes? Has it been found? Someone saw you with your violin case on the platform in Zurich. What's the meaning of this? I didn't steal anything. Nobody said you did. I just wanted to ask you whether you might have noticed anything on the platform. Ah. Well. Why did you think I was accusing you? Well, I thought... Uh, because you mentioned my violin case in the context of the purse. Apropos, may I have a look at your violin? It must be a very extraordinary piece. Oh, that's... Uh, that's not possible. It's a genuine Guarneri. Very valuable. Very. And also very sensitive. What could harm it here? Light? Air? May I ask you to open the violin case? No, you may not. I'm not guilty of anything. I'm afraid I have to insist. Then I'm afraid you need a warrant. I will not stand back and let you rifle through my belongings. Have a good trip. Thank you. Thousands of things I would like to ask her, but nothing would justify neglecting my duties here on the train. Uh, Mrs. Miller? Yes? Uh, please excuse my unusual request, but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? It's a long story. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one. Go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do it any harm. But will you, Mr. Zelda? Of course not, madam. Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, constable. is too short to get a good grip on it. I'm at a loss without a key or a proper tool. The door is locked. I'm at a loss. It doesn't work with this kind of lock. I need something to turn the pin. I'm at a lock. It doesn't work with this kind of lock. I need something to turn the pin. First, I better see about getting the door open and then have another talk with the professor. It doesn't seem like I'll get anything out of him as long as the door is still locked. The door is locked. I'm at a loss without a key or a proper tool. I don't want to imply that I'm an expert, but I think that this could pick a normal lock. It 
doesn't work with this kind of lock. I need something to turn the pin. doesn't seem to be what it used to be. I'm not going to catch a cold because of you. Go somewhere else if you don't like it. All right, Matt. Tell me now. The violinist won't let me check his violin case. Of course he won't. He's hiding something. Should I distract him? Then you can have a look in his case. Hmm. What do you suggest? I... I could tell him there's a suitcase full of money in the next carriage. If he's a thief, he'll definitely want to take a look at it. I don't think he'll fall for that. Or I can insult him and then run away. He'll try to catch me and you'll have a chance to look in that violin case. Now that I think about it, this is something I have to attend to on my own. It would be expecting a bit much from a little boy. Little boy? You must be kidding. Uh, sorry, uh, Sheriff, but your idea about distracting him is good all the same. So long. So longer. idea what I'd say to Matt. We Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. That makes no sense. The violinist would close the window immediately and I wouldn't have enough time to search his violin case. I've no idea the kid's not on the warpath anymore, for the next half hour. I think the violinist is hiding something, but to be sure that Matt was right, I have to get a look in the violin case. How can I do that without the violinist's consent? The violinist is uncooperative. I have to come... The Baroness seems to have, uh, I better not bother her until I find her purse. First, I better see about getting, it doesn't seem like I'll get anything out of him. He doesn't make a very balanced impression. And he, of all people, isn't bothered by a... Need a bit of wire or something like that to pick the lock. And suddenly, it's me who's the thief on the train. Whoops, that was easier than expected. Hmm. Batteries, a toothbrush, shaving brush, but not the key to the compartment door. Just this one. Hmm. Too small for the door, but it might still be useful. Key to a padlock, I'm sure of that. It's not the first time I've held one. I'd better let him read his new... I'd better... The box is secured with a padlock. There we go. This should help. My 
grandfather was a blacksmith. When I was a child, I used to play with tongs and hammers in his workshop. My mother never cared for that. She was always worried about my little fingers, but I never hurt myself seriously. I'm quite clever with tools. I have everything I need. Inspector Lagrange was quite clear. I'm only to enter the freight car if there's news to report. I bet I could really get a grip on the boat with these. Well, come on then, hurry up. Hello? I barely left the window ajar. Uh, nothing to see. Ah. Are you okay? Hmm? Yes. Fine. Do you have any idea why the door was locked? I don't know. Or maybe the constant vibrations caused the lock to lock itself. You can't possibly believe that. Well, then what's your theory? The conductor could have locked it from the outside. On the other hand, it could have been someone here in the compartment who locked the door from the inside. Who? And where have they gone? They could have climbed out there. Who would be that insane? You tell me, Professor. So, what are you hiding in your bag? What do you have that would be worth stealing? No, nothing. No valuables? Certainly not. <laughs> not on my salary. It was enough for a first-class compartment on a luxury train. That's... my business. You're playing a dangerous game, Professor Lucien. I'd like to look around a bit. Of course. Hmm. Assuming there really was someone in the compartment, and he climbed out the window, Where's he gone? What's this? What do you have there? It's a button. From a suit or a uniform, I guess. The burglar might have lost it. Maybe, or maybe not. If I notice anyone with a missing button on his jacket, I'll ask him about it. But I wouldn't get my hopes up. If there was a burglar, he climbed out the window and jumped off the train. I really wonder what the professor is hiding from me. But I can't just rifle through the luggage of innocent citizens. This is the 60s. Very nice fountain pen. Pricey. If you'd managed to decode hieroglyphics that boggled the best minds of the last 3,000 years, you'd have received a gift like that as well. The Bible, Grimm's fairy tales, Bobby Dick, and gin, whiskey, and rum. All classics. Hmm. No, nothing interesting. I found the button in front of the window in the archaeologist's compartment. The burglar might have lost it while climbing out the window, but there's no proof, my theory.
the burglar leave any clues? Here's something. Might be fingerprints. there are some prints on the window. If I had a forensics kit, I could make the prints visible with carbon powder. What are you doing? I'm trying to make what I suspect are fingerprints visible. <laughs> and? You found anything? Unfortunately, no. There are only a couple of fingerprints on the window. It was probably clean before departure, but the prints I can see look like glove marks. Well, wouldn't you expect that? What professional burglar wouldn't wear gloves? Which makes me wonder what a professional burglar would hope to find in your compartment. I... don't have anything to say to that. I thought as much. It was worth a try. Only make out faint traces. Whoever was in this compartment was wearing gloves. Professor Lucien? Yes? Godspeed, Professor. Thanks. The good professor is hiding something. It would be good if I could find out more about him. The Baroness, I better not bother her until I... Matt says the violinist put something in his violin case on the platform. Seems suspicious somehow. The question... Matt says the violin the que I've no idea what I'd say to Matt. The kid's not on the warpath anymore. I don't think he'll be for the next half hour any That makes no sense. The violinist would close the window immediately. We Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot. Uh, pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. There are thousands of things, but nothing. Mrs. Miller? Yes? Thank you for your hairpin, Mrs. Miller. It really got me out of a jam. Oh, really? That's good to hear. And thank you for bringing it back to me. Not everybody would have. I'm a Swiss policeman, madam. I couldn't do otherwise even if I tried. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to pro but she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt, and a difficult bus from what they say. An extraordinary woman, yet they say she can be di- Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. Ah, Mr. Zellner. I've been wondering why you're wearing gloves. Are your hands really so sensitive? Or are you cold? 
Ah, well, it's an old habit. As a doctor, one is so conscious of all the pathogens, bacteria and viruses that surround us. Though, of course, perhaps I do tend to be a bit too cautious. I know exactly what you mean. As a policeman, I sense subterfuge and lies everywhere. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. Inspector Lebron, anything to report? I got Professor Lucien into his compartment using a pair of pliers. Did you notice anything inside the compartment? The window was open. Someone could have climbed out. And the professor? Acted suspiciously. He rummaged around in his leather bag. And? He seemed to have found what he was searching for. Good. Good work. Now, perhaps you could give me some information. All right. We should... What? The light's gone out! Flashlights! Ah! Get off me! There, sir! An envelope! My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, what the dickens? It's, it's a... Away with it! Take cover! Is everyone all right? Are you hurt? Quick thinking. Well done, Zellner. <coughs> I think the tunnel collapsed. Then he's trapped. Hurry, we have to lock the second exit. Sir, there's a fire up ahead. The engine's burning. It's a distraction. Hurry, block the exit. But, sir... <coughs> the fire will consume all the oxygen. He's right, Inspector. A fire in a narrow tunnel is extremely dangerous. Merde! Go to the front of the train, find the engineer, and tell him to move the train out of the tunnel. Yes, sir. Are you ready? You have to uncouple the freight car, you understand? <coughs> I understand. I'll see to the passengers. They should all wait in the tunnel. We'll check each one in turn as they go out. Let's get to it. A lot was damaged by the sudden stop, but the bowl was thick enough to survive the fall. The last of the candy has vanished. Whiskey, scotch, rum, liqueurs, enough to entertain everyone on the train all the way from Paris to Istanbul. Carling Black Label, a British beer. No good. Insufficient alcohol content. For practical purposes, I mean, not for drinking. Champagne. The finest. Maybe we'll open a bottle if we get out of the tunnel alive. Until then, though, it's no use to me. Hmm. High-proof rum. 
could be useful. My God, what a fire. I hope Constable Oliver can at least reach the engine. Rum from Austria. Believe it or not, it's 80% alcohol by volume. There's no way anyone would drink it straight. I filled the bowl about a third of the way with rum. Phew, strong stuff. I filled the... Phew. I filled the... Phew, strong stuff. Pills for my heart. I'm supposed... Pardon me, I did not mean to scare you. What are you doing here, Doctor? Legrand asked me to check whether there are any passengers left on the train. Really? No one is here, except for me and you. Excellent. Then I will continue searching at the front. Did anyone act suspiciously before the explosion? Did anyone leave the seat, for example? I was the only one on the train who wasn't seated when the freight car exploded. Thank God. Otherwise, I would have been caught by the blast as well. You certainly were lucky. Perhaps I was. What happened over there? The inspector said something about gas canisters that exploded. He didn't want to scare you. The truth is, it was a bomb meant to kill him and the Bobby. My God. An attack. But who would... The investigations are ongoing, but first we have to get the burning train out of the tunnel. Oh, of course. How are the passengers? They are in a state of shock, of course. The blackout and the sudden stop were frightening enough, but then the explosion, the dust, everyone rushed for the exits. I was helping the American woman bring Lady Westmacott to safety. They are waiting outside in the tunnel. One entrance is blocked by a fire, and the other one seems to have collapsed. Continue to search the train. I'll decouple the buried freight car. All right. Doctor? Can you give me a few matches? Oh, certainly. Thanks. I'll meet you outside. Do hurry. The chair either fell over thanks to the sudden stop, or an escaping passenger knocked it over. Warning to get off the train as quickly as possible after a sudden stop and a massive tremor, that's understandable. I noticed the extinguisher earlier doesn't match the decor. I suppose that the railway company had to comply with safety regulations at the cost of aesthetics. It'd be useless against the fire out there, and it's too cumbersome to carry around. At best, I can use it here. <coughs> All right, let's go. I filled the bowl about a third of the way with rum. Phew, strong stuff.
I'll never set fire to the chair like using matches. I need a better plan. I don't see Legrand or the constable, but I can make out the silhouettes of some of the passengers. They seem to be unscathed. All the same, the fire is getting bigger, and I don't have much time. Coupling mechanism is down there. I'm sure I could uncouple the car if I only had enough luck. some matches, and half of the book Okay, I'll smear some grease on the curtain. Flame is I'm the god of fire. That's better now. A lever on a pressure sleeve running along a thread. Incredibly basic mechanism, the kind that lasts forever. Aha, I can uncouple it with this lever. Okay. <clears throat> There we go. Time to get out of here. Listen, everybody. Listen! <laughs> Robert, what's the situation? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find the engineer, so I got in the driver's cab myself and released the brake. <laughs> All right. Good job. You too. Listen, please. Matty, where's Matt? Where's my son? Relax, madam. I'm sure I... Where are you? 
and the coal tender are burning stronger and harder. The airflow is feeding the flames. I have to decouple the wagons immediately. Sooner or later, the engine will be blown apart. The emergency brake, that could be our chance. Damn, that makes things extremely complicated. The emergency brake either was damaged in the explosion or was sabotaged. But whatever, it's not working. I... I think I should try to uncouple the locomotive. I mean, how else can I stop the train? Hey, there you are. What were you thinking? Ah, come out of there. Is he gone? Is who gone? The man! What are you doing on the train anyway? Why didn't you wait in the tunnel with the other passengers? I... I wanted to get my pistol. Your pistol? There's so many cops and thieves and explosions and everything. Then I need a pistol too. Makes sense. Well, what about this man? There was a man. He was coughing. One of the passengers? I think he came down from the roof. All right. First, I'll stop the train, and then we'll have a chat, okay? You want to come out? Hmm, good idea. You stay put. Matt saw something. It could prove to be very useful, but if I don't stop the train soon, I won't be able to use that information in this lifetime. I suppose this handbag belongs to Miss Miller, Matt's mother. Lady Westmacott's bag is probably smaller, and more expensive. Aha! Matt hasn't grasped the gravity of the situation yet, which is good, as I can't take care of him and the train. I presume the Baroness's luggage toppled over and is blocking the door. <laughs> Professor Lucien's suitcase. Unlike the leather bag, he left it behind when he fled the train with the other passengers. I don't think there's anything interesting in it. Whatever the Professor is hiding from me, it's in his leather bag. Soft towel, very comfortable. I'll wrap it around my neck to keep my hands free. What have you got yourself into? Couldn't you have just let it be? But no, of course not. And now you're here, on an out-of-control train in the Alps, responsible for the life of a child who'd be doomed without you. What are you waiting for, eh? Time to save the day. Tanks don't seem to be damaged. The water is still running. When the high and mighty tra- It's soaking up the cold water. <sighs> My situation isn't that desperate.
see out of the window because of the smoke. I don't know how much coal is burning on the tender up there, but it must be tons. I can't do anything about the fire. This door leads to the tender. It will be uncomfortable, no doubt, but I don't think that the flames are directly behind the door. I suppose there's a relatively safe space in the lee of the tender where one could stay a little while. If the emergency brake doesn't work, I'll have to try something else. <sighs> Here goes. Ouch! Hot! Locked. The handle is already too hot to touch. This door leads to the tender. It will be uncomfortable, no doubt, but I don't think that the flames are directly behind the door. I suppose there's a relatively safe space in the lee of the tender where one could stay a little while. for emergencies. If this isn't an emergency, I don't know what is. The handle is already too hot to touch. Very handy. On the other hand, one does need... Okay, we'll do it the hard way. Protect me. With headgear like this, I can dare to plunge into the inferno. Ah, the coupling. It looks just like the one on the freight car. That means that first I have to turn that thing there. That keeps it under tension. That should do the trick. Coupling won't release because it's under too much tension. Uncoupled the locomotive at full speed. Not bad, eh? Do you think we'll get in trouble? Because of the locomotive? 
I don't think so. It was pretty old already. Come out, so we can have a chat. I checked the entire train. There's no one on it except for us. What an adventure. Oh, yeah. Tell me, what did you see on the train? <sighs> well, it was like this. I wanted to get my pistol. And then? When the guy was gone, I got up and banged on the window. I wanted to get out of there. But then I thought, what if the guy can hear me from the next car? So I got scared, and I hit again. You did well. Are you sure it was a man? Yeah, very sure. What else could he be? A woman? Heh, <laughs> no. Girls can't be thieves. Girls are always honest. <laughs> if only you knew. Did you recognize the man? Have you met him before? I don't think so. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? No. It was very dark and I was hiding. Was he a tall man or a short man? Just a man. I think he was a bad man. Why do you think that? He was sneaking around, even though everybody else was outside in the tunnel. Maybe he just wanted to get his wooden pistol. Ah, oh, man. The envelope that the man lost, where is it? I thought it might be important. I think we should have a look. Hmm. Some cash. An Italian passport. Blank. Very interesting. And here, a ticket for... for... For the cruise! What? The tickets we have for the big ship from Venice to Cairo look exactly the same. Interesting. May I keep it? What do you want to do with it? Take a vacation. It's evidence. And my chance to go with you. The ticket and everything else in the envelope are part of my investigation. And you have no part to play in Cairo. If I hadn't given you the envelope, you'd have no proof that the Raven's heir would be on the ship. Ugh. The ship is his next chance to steal the eye. And he won't give up until he has it. And that's precisely why you should let me come along. No. I deserve to come along. <sighs> what you did was extraordinary. Far more than anyone could have a right to expect from you. And you still want to leave me behind? You met our foe and barely escaped with your life. You may not be that lucky next time. It wasn't luck. You can return to Switzerland with your head held high. Enjoy your triumph. I have not achieved anything yet. The Fiend tried to kill us, and he's still at large. What else did you find out in the tunnel? Not much. After we came out of the tunnel, Robert and I questioned the passengers. Which didn't turn up anything new. No. The engineer and the fireman were missing. They were found a few kilometers back on the track. Both claimed to have been overwhelmed by a shadow and thrown off the train. But you don't believe that. I'm checking their stories. One of them may have been paid to eliminate the other one. How could the Raven's heir have found out about the trap? 
How was he able to put the dynamite in the box and place the letter? The dynamite was probably already in the box when I put it in the safe. I didn't check it. You had no reason to do so. It wasn't my only mistake. I knew someone was on the roof of the freight car, but I let myself be distracted by that damned letter. How did you know? Too late. I should have reacted instantly. I'm coming with you. Full stop. The thief was able to place ten sticks of dynamite in a cash box right under my nose. For all we know, you could already be sitting on the next bomb. You cannot come. But, Inspector... We're here. Inspector Legrand, an urgent telegram from Paris. Bad news? It's about the unfortunate events on the train. And to return to Paris and explain myself. But sir, what about the eye? They want to inform the Egyptian authorities that there might be a burglary attempt. Might? Egyptian authorities? What if the jewel is stolen at sea? I know, I know. I never received it. Keep a close watch on the loading of the eye, Robert. Aye, sir. It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zelda. What is the Constable's problem with me? <laughs> I think he's jealous. Scotland Yard assigned him to assist me, just as you were sent by the Swiss authorities. Uh, with the distinction that he may go to Egypt. Robert is to accompany me at all times. Your mission was restricted to Switzerland. At this moment, I want to be sent back to Switzerland just as much as you want to be sent back to Paris. I know, but I'm walking on thin ice, and I can't carry you too. And the second eye is in that safe? Yes, an emerald. It's been kept in a bank in Zurich since the start of the war. I personally took it out of the bank vault and Professor Lucien certified that it was the real thing. And while a fake jewel was sent by train... The real one was brought here in an armored car. How is it protected? You can only open the safe if you have three special keys. Professor Lucien has one, and Baroness Van Trebitz, who's paying for all this, has the second. The third was sent by air courier to Dr. Abbas Mokhtar, the director of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. So, not even you could possibly open the safe before it arrives in Egypt. That's correct. We don't want to make it too easy for potential thieves. Commendable. I hope you're aware of the fact that you're risking your career. Indeed I am. Why do you care so much about this case? Someone pretends to be the Raven, and you promptly risk your career? What if he's not just pretending? What do you mean by that? It's his handwriting. And there's only one person who ever called me Nico. Have you ever considered the possibility that I shot the wrong man? But wh what do you mean by that? Let us assume just for a moment that the person I shot and who fell from the roof was not the Raven, who would have cared enough to uncover the truth. The chief of police, the politicians? No, they wanted to revel in a successful manhunt, and it was the best thing that could have happened to the Raven. The search for him was over. <laughs> he had no reason to fear me anymore. I had so many medals afterwards that he could hear them jingling kilometers away. And now he's back? And you're the only one who can stop him? Does that sound probable to you? The feathers, the letters... Nico! No one outside the police force knew that the Raven used to call me that in his letters. Policemen gossip. And there are plenty of forgers. You can't seriously intend to stake your reputation on such weak evidence. My reputation rests on something that I probably did not do. I have to find out who's behind all this. Let's review. One of the two most valuable jewels in the world was stolen. 
Obviously, the second one will be next, and you suspect a legendary burglar who's been dead for five years. Go on. The second jewel is about to be put on board over there, in a safe that requires three keys. Our thief may already have the first key, the archaeologist's key, from the train. We don't know anything about the status of the second key, which was meant to be air freighted to Cairo. We have to assume that he already has it. Therefore, there's just one key left. The Baroness's. Correct. So, you'll need my eyes on board. Look, you can keep your eyes open for me here on the wharf. I'd be most grateful. But when this ship sets sail, you will not, I repeat, not be on board. But, Inspector... We're dealing with a dangerous man. And I will pursue him regardless of the consequences. I won't let you get mixed up in this affair. It's still my decision. No, it's not. It's mine. And I've already made it. Good day, Constable Zellner. <laughs>